say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Waiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen, our outdoors kitchen today. That's right. We're the farmers. This is our kitchen. Yes, farmer is our last name. That's right. A lot of people say, is that for real? <laughs> yeah, it's for real. This is Mrs. Farmer. I'm Mr. Farmer. Or you can call us Tim and Nikki. That's right. However you prefer. <laughs> it's like right now, maybe 80 degrees. It feels cold. <laughs> yeah, for the hot part of what usually is a really hot part right. of the summer. So we had this day and I thought, man, we got to cook outside. Mm -hmm. So we went freezer diving. We got to start getting rid of some things out there because in the fall, a lot of times I'll put some venison in there. Right. And some sheep, right. some lambs, except for Montana, That's not right. Montana. He's going to be like in a petting farm setting for the he rest is. of his life. He's in a petting zoo. He's very happy. That's right. Here we have these steaks that we pulled out. I know somebody who owns a steakhouse, mm -hmm. and I went and tried one of his steaks. And I said, man, you know, typically I'm a, I'm a very quality salt, very quality pepper. That's all I need for a good steak. Right. I don't need a marinade, don't want a marinade. Maybe a little garlic, but for the most part, that's all I want on my steak with a couple other secret little mm -hmm. things that I sometimes add. His steak was really different. It's kind of had a southwest flair to it. And I said, what did you do? So he told me so much, <laughs> but he didn't tell me everything. So I had to come home and guess. You're good at that. So you think about the flavors that he had on it. I know there was paprika, mm -hmm. probably smoked paprika. And I know that there was a chipotle flavor on there. Chipotle, by the way, for those who don't know, is just basically a dry, aged, smoked jalapeno. Really? That's all it is. So we've got coffee. Yeah, that's and interesting. Everybody loves a little bit of coffee taste, mm -hmm. ground coffee oh, in their yeah. steak. I've got some turbinado sugar. What's turbinado sugar? That is a coarse, more lightly processed sugar. Mm -hmm. There's more of the molasses flavor still in it. It's bigger, I like the big chunks. It's bigger yes. and it stays, even when you're using it in a recipe, a lot of times it maintains its structure. It doesn't cook down and break down so you can have that little bite. Sugar in a steak, mm -hmm. you may say. I think it'd be good. <laughs> so what I did is I took all those flavors and I'm gonna try to get his flavor as much as I can because okay. it's a good steak. I'm gonna try with a little cumin. I know he had some cumin in there. I'm gonna put, oh, Two teaspoons in there. Smoked paprika. Oh, that a really lot good. of smoked paprika. I'm gonna put three teaspoons. Okay. Now the chipotle, which I really tasted. Is that hot? It's a, it's a jalapeno. You want a bite? No. You want a spoonful? No, thank you. I don't Just a spoonful it. of chipotle. One, <laughs> two, three, and a half. Now what I've found with chipotle and things when you put them on a steak. For some reason, the heating process kind of slows that down. It takes the heat out. Yeah. Just use a little bit of a quality. This is some of our telecherry pepper. I'm gonna probably go three quarters of a teaspoon. I'm gonna go a tablespoon of salt because you really need a lot of salt on that steak. Mm -hmm. Unless your doctor says no and then- Be careful. You gotta be careful. I'm gonna take some of this sugar and I'm gonna put Let's go, let's go a teaspoon. Then with the coffee, I really want that to stand out. I want to taste that. And again, this is kind of a different thing for a steak. Now, most people like to taste their beef, but if you can find something that really accompanies it well and makes that flavor pop, I'm a fan of this. Now that was three tablespoons of coffee. That's a lot of coffee. Three tablespoons, three that's three and a half. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah because I really want that to stand out. Now, here's what we've got. Don't be afraid. I need to smell that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. I like Don't that. Don't be afraid to try things. Don't be afraid to go to a restaurant and say, okay, 
I'm gonna break this down. And they go home immediately, write it down, mm -hmm. what you remember, and then, oh, that does smell good. It smells really good. Now we have many ways to use our heat here in the outdoors. We have our Dutch oven over here, and I want you to keep this in mind. If you never remember another thing I say about cooking outside, 350 degrees in this is 350 degrees in your oven. There are plenty of guides all over the place to tell you how to do that. And that smells right. heavenly. It does smell good, I can't wait. So what am I gonna do to begin our steak process here? I'm gonna go ahead and put a little olive oil on it. I'm gonna go ahead and season it ahead of time because as I put this in the cast iron, I'm not putting it on a high temperature. I'm not searing it. Mm -hmm. I'm cooking it in there like you would cook it in an oven at a low temperature. I'm gonna try to keep it about 250 or less. Mm -hmm. These steaks are room temperature and they're making my mouth water. They look really Everything good. Everything smells really mm -hmm. good here. I have got my Dutch oven on about 250 degrees. That's roughly four on the bottom, 12 on the top. That's gonna create a low temperature in there where that fat can start to render. They actually start to cook. They're not gonna cook and I'm not gonna sear them. That's what the fireplace is mm -hmm. for. But meanwhile, I go ahead and put just a little olive oil on there and I take my well-mixed seasoning and I generously, that's a ribeye, and I think personally that ribeyes work out really well at medium rare. All right, so I'm gonna turn them over. Now I'm gonna kinda push my seasoning in there. And when I get them off and get ready to put them in the fire, I'm gonna put a little more seasoning on. But just know <laughs> that that flavor is gonna be already working. And then again, your steaks need to be room temperature. And what I'm smelling here Again, now this is a very nice steakhouse where I'm talking about, and the guy obviously wouldn't tell me his whole deal, but I've, I took a whiff, and then I added some stuff. And this is really, really, if you've ever had a coffee rub, you'll know what I'm talking about, along with the Chipotle. Now again, we're not looking for, and you didn't hear, a sizzle there. You, these are just gonna warm up and that fat's gonna start to render down. <laughs> and I want them to be about 100, 105 degrees when they come out of there. Then we finish them up on the fire. So we freezer dive mm -hmm. and found us some ribeye. Yes. I love getting in there. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get me a stand-up freezer because the chest freezers, <laughs> you lose stuff. You lose stuff. But you were excited when you find something you didn't realize you had. That makes you happy too. That's exactly right. Right. So anyhow, with prices what they are, we do keep freezers and we buy stuff when it's on sale. Right. And we also are finding some meats on sale and we're canning them. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can can meats. Yes, you can can meats. Yes, that's right. Say that five times fast. Yes, you can can meats. Yes, you can can a little So here we are. The next step is to let this steak over here go for about 20, 25 minutes until mm -hmm. that internal temperature. I don't want it that hot, maybe 100 degrees. Yeah. This is something I found out that works every time. It's a no miss type thing. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna bring it out here. I'm gonna give it a good sear. I'm gonna put a little more of this on it. And then I'm talking beautiful, wonderful. I'm excited, I'm excited. For the side, we had in our refrigerator, we had company the other night and we had some fresh sweet potatoes and we didn't wanna do anything to them other than bake them. Mm -hmm. We had some left over. Yes, we did. And we're gonna take these and what we're gonna do, we got a pan over here. These are already done, they've already cooked. And if you wanted to boil them skinless, whatever, and cut those up, however you wanna cut them up. And we're gonna take our assorted sweet potatoes and we're gonna put them on the bottom of the pan. And again, these are already cooked, so we don't have to worry too much about how long it's gonna take. So we're leaving the skin on because the skin is good I like for you, skin. very good for you. I like it. So what are we gonna do now, Mrs. Farmer? What I don't can know. we do? Oh, let me think. Mm, how about some brown sugar? This sounds delicious. Could you dig it? I could, I like brown sugar. What about some butter though? Oh yeah, lots of butter. A little bit of salt. Just a little bit of salt. Oh, salt makes it good. Just a yeah. wee bit of butter. A wee bit. And then we're gonna come back, oh, with some brown sugar. Yummy. And this is not gonna be good. Nobody's gonna no. eat this. So now I'm not gonna have too much heat on the bottom of this pan. Most of the heat is gonna be on the top. Are you gonna put cinnamon? Yep. Maybe a little, a little bit of cinnamon. cinnamon. Cinnamon's good for circulation, you know. That's right. A little bit of cinnamon. I got you some marshmallows. Then, Oh, the grandkids are gonna be so upset when they see this. Because these are for their s'mores. This is decadent. <laughs> yes, it is. I used to love, you, you almost felt like it was cheating when you yeah. were eating you know, at your grandmother's house and she made sweet potatoes with marshmallows. Yes. Can't go wrong. That's right. So now, 
This is gonna be closed up. Oh, that's gonna be yum. We're gonna put this on top of our other pan and let it start getting ooey gooey. So we got our butter over there. Miss Farmer, if you cut me half of this sweet onion. Okay, what size onion? About fingernail size. All right. I was in bear camp. I was bear hunting one time in Northern Ontario with some guys. And somebody made something like this. And I can't remember exactly what they did, so I'm kind of scratching from memory. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to saute these onions. So Mrs. Farmer, if you could scoop those up. I will. In your two hands. I'll just bring the whole pan over. How's That's this? beautiful. All right, now I did something tonight. I've got grates on this fireplace. I just want to prove to you. This is from a grill on the back porch. I just want to show you that you don't have to have a fancy smancy grate. You could set up a rock, a log or whatever, get about 11, 12 inches off the ground, get your fire going and you are ready to roll. Now, if you do want to go the trouble of building an outdoor place to cook, I love this little snake because I can move that around on or off the fire. Works really well for that. So we got a nice little sizzle going here. So we also had some little old heads of cabbage that are needing some attention pretty quick. So again, I was in Canada in bear camp and I remember somebody making this. So our onions are browning up nicely. We're gonna put some cabbage in here. I'm gonna put about maybe a tablespoon and a half of soy. I'm gonna put some vinegar, obviously. A couple tablespoons of vinegar. Just a little bit of chicken broth. Just enough to kind of keep it moist. Just a dab of hot sauce, your favorite. I'm gonna continue to cook my cabbage over here. So again, when you talk about reverse sear, the sear comes after, not before. We put it in there basically to start the cooking process and start rendering those fats down. If you just threw it on the grill for three or four minutes, you're gonna have a tough steak. If you let it start to cook down and let those, let those juices start to render down until it gets to about 100, 105 degrees, and then do your sear over here according to what temperature you like. But this steak right here has a unique profile. After we took it off here, popped it on here, got some grill marks on it, and that profile is so wonderful if you like just a little bit of heat. And again, you would think with the chipotle, that much chipotle, you would have a whole lot of heat. Right. You are it, really sensitive to heat, and you did just fine. That was perfect, because I think because it cooks it in there. So in just a minute, I'm gonna put a lot of heat on top of this to make those marshmallows brown and melt into an ooey gooey mess. Everything's coming together quick. So now back to the cabbage. All right, now just a little bit of salt because we're gonna add some something that has salt in it. Now here's the part that I remember. In deer camp, or bear camp, everybody's got ramen noodles. Quick and easy, you got carbs. This is a seasoning from one. I don't even wanna know what's in it. Then we're gonna take the actual noodles and towards the end here, we're gonna crunch these up. So that's gonna give that just a little bit of a crunch. And remember, we've got soy, hot sauce. Now we're gonna let those dissolve just a little bit of that liquid. Then a little sesame seeds, just to jazz things up. And that's ready to go. when I said 350 degrees out here is the same as 350 degrees in the oven or 400 degrees, it's the same thing. Right. Get you a little book if you're gonna cook outside that has the chart. How many to put on top and how many to put on the bottom. Then you have it like a convection mm -hmm. type thing going and you got some wonderful stuff. Now what you do have in the oven is a little more control. So here is a ooey gooey wonderful dish that we did with our orangish, yellowish sweet potatoes outside. But we also had some purple sweet mm -hmm. potatoes purple schmurple. So here's, if we did that in the oven in the house, here's the steps. I took some pictures while we are doing this and here's the final step. And there's our dessert, what do you think? I love dessert, it's perfect, I love it. <laughs> you know, as a kid, we thought we were kind of getting dessert when grandma would oh, make this. yeah. All right, so what you do have in your oven is more control. Say you want to put the broiler on and, and really watch it. You do have control, so the same thing here, except we had purple. Mm -hmm. 
sweet potatoes, which are healthy. You have more beta carotene in the, in the orange ones, yeah. but probably more antioxidants in these purple. Anytime you have purple vegetables, you got something good going on. So as the steak rests and as we look at the cabbage and our toast, everything looks wonderful. Yes, it does. Most television shows, if you watch your favorite series, they have 10 or 11, maybe if you're lucky, 15 to 17. We try to do in the high 30s. Yeah. So, you know, somebody every now and then says, well, that was a rerun. Yes, but we're doing twice as many shows and Kelly works hard and yeah. you work hard. It takes a lot to put a show together. And thank you so much for hanging out with us for 10 years. In celebration of 10 years, while we let everything rest and get ready, let's take a look back in one of our most popular segments, my favorite dessert over the years. You know what it is? Apple cake, I know. That your grandmother made? Yes. We made that up there on the Dutch oven. So let's take a peek back at my favorite cake. But you know, as you open this up, there was an actual note from your grandmother's She wrote it to my mom. Kitchen. Yeah, back in the day, they used to write letters. That's oh, how yeah. you got stuff. And she actually, my mom actually taped it in here. And I think I was only like three or four. And it's a letter talking about how this is this great cookbook. It's got everybody in it. Give this to Nikki Lynn, save it for her when she gets older. And she listed all the pages and everybody. These Put Nikki Lynn's book away until she grows up and then give it to her so she can have recipes from her grandmothers, aunts, cousins, and her mom. So this is all your family. But you know what though? It's all hers. She yeah. put our names on it. I know everything in this is her best. And every time I open a page, I'm like, I remember that. This is all good stuff. That's the thing about family. Man, you know, it's so cool. You know, my mom's chow chow is, you know, is passed down. Right. And, and that's her deal. It's I mean, amazing. And it's, you know, it's, it's just fantastic to have these memories of people related to food, because right. food's, food's the time you sit around the table and talk about each other and have family time. and It's just cool to have those kind of memories. That's excellent. And right old there. recipes are the best. Oh yeah. I think they're the best. Speaking of old recipes, you know, let's go ahead and put this together before we get the salt and everything out. All right, let's mix Perfect. this thing up. All right, well I got the book right here in front of me, and it, what we're going to start with, with two cups of flour, which I already have mm -hmm. in here, and if you want to go ahead and add, we have a cup and a half of sugar. All right, so we're putting all our dry ingredients together, she says here. Put all dry ingredients together. Now in this container, I have got a teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon and a half of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. All that. All right, now we're gonna take four apples, and I got my little handy dandy. That is handy. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get those ready and get, I'm gonna take the skins off of those too. Okay. We mix the apples in. Now we're gonna have to mix that. So mix our apples with our right, mix the apples in in the dry ingredients. Yeah, right. kind of like apple pie a little bit, isn't it? Thanks, yeah, it is. Apple isn't this neat to know that your grandmother did the exact same yes. thing? So now we're gonna pour oil. Okay, how much oil is that? That's actually three quarters of a cup that she put okay. in. And then that's go ahead and throw those two eggs in two that eggs. I've already mixed. Mm -hmm. How much vanilla? Vanilla. Extra? We have got one teaspoon of vanilla. Wow. A little extra just because you like it. Okay. You this know what, just good. looking at that consistency, I know what this is going to be, and it's going to be good. This looks delicious. Now, everything we, all, we always do it ahead of time to make sure it's good. This is the first thing we've just taken right out of your grandmother's book, and it's, it's interesting, the consistency of this. Yes. And I think it's going to be like a heavy, rich, really am excited to see how this turns Me out. Me too. I always ate her stuff, and it was delicious. I haven't had a chance to make it all. Looks there good you to go. Me. Now the great thing about stacking is we've already got our ones on the bottom. Oh wow, oh. yum. <laughs> Look at that, oh the smell. Nikki, oh that looks smell good. That. Touch. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. All right, let's take this off and let it cool. Yum. I kind of knew what we we're going to have here, but this is the first time that we've ever cooked anything that we haven't tried. But the texture, it's almost like, it's almost like those soft cookies you yes. get. Yes. This is exceeding expectations, just from the consistency. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's dense. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, that's stupid. That's really good. I told you every recipe in that oh, book's good. Wow. That every recipe's delicious. That's amazing. This mm. is not even right. Wow. That is absolutely delicious. How do you describe it? It's like cake, pie, and cookie know. mix. That is, that, yeah, it's like a really good cookie 
<laughs> but the consistency is wonderful. You taste the apple. It's almost like a apple pie, thick apple mm. pie cookie. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> you gonna eat the whole thing? Thank you, Grandma. Ooh. No, that is really, you know what? I try to watch my sweets, but this is ridiculous. You like it? Mm. Yum. It's not out of a box. That's delicious. Those are fresh organic apples. The sugar, the flour, boom, instant. That's the easiest recipe ever that turned that out really that easy. good. That's not out of a box. And you just need the powdered sugar. You don't need icing on that, boy. No, because it's very rich. You gonna stop? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do your magic. All right, we're trying to end the show here, and you're on your second piece. I can't help it. Are you gonna look at that? That's good. That <laughs> and being outside too, I think it just enhances it. You gonna eat your second piece? I'm gonna let that set for a minute and cool down. Then we're gonna talk about the garlic. But you gotta try this. This is something <laughs> else. So what happens when you run that through? about 250 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes. Wow. You see that? You see a little bit of pink. That's a good medium rare. How is it? So what do you taste there? What's different? I, the, the, I can taste the coffee on it. I kind of mm -hmm. like that. It's a whole different taste. I, I like that a lot. That is extraordinary. That is. It's not something we do every time. Again, I just prefer the salt and pepper, oh. maybe a little garlic. Would you cut me another piece of that? I will. Oh my. When you're cooking it and that fat's rendering down and you have the smoke from the fire, you got Delish. something special. So I remember deer camp, bear camp, you always have some guys who are like home chefs. Oh yeah. You know, they come up with these neat things and, and this is one and I think he called it cowboy cabbage. I like and I it. remember him putting some ramen noodles and, and maybe some, some nuts. I want you to try this. He must have had kids if he had the noodles. He must have. Everybody has those when they Probably college kids. kids. Need it noodle. And the seasoning mm -hmm. is one of the noodle packet seasonings. So you got that and a little soy to salt it up. Nice a crunch. crunch. I like the crunch. So again, on our sweet potatoes, you know when the kids come over and we have uh, carrots. Carrots. <laughs> we call them carrots because they wouldn't eat them. So we put a little brown sugar and some butter. Oh, they love them. And some maple syrup, which is the same thing we did here. They would love this. And they would love this. What would we call this? I don't know. They'd mm. like the color too. They would love the purple. Taryn would like the purple. Oh wow. So you're eating marshmallows. And someone might say, Mr. Farmer, mm -hmm. did you overdo the marshmallows? Mm-mm. Can't overdo marshmallows. That's really good. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like candy. Yes, it is. So that is a little dish <laughs> that we did in the oven. Did one outside, did one inside to show you. What happens inside mm -hmm. is just as good as outside and vice versa. Now you don't have as much control sometimes in Dutch oven, you gotta kinda take the top off and look and make sure you pile stuff up. But this. I think you like that. <laughs> so, it's been a long time since we cooked outdoors. And I'm gonna dive in the freezer. Maybe next week and see what we have left. Good idea. What, what do we have? You made a list. I did, we have everything. You just need to play. I need to dig around and mm -hmm. see what we've got. Because again, we have deer here. And deer, one of the most healthy meats you can possibly eat. It's so lean, so delicious. So very shortly, I'm gonna be putting a deer in the freezer. I know this can be hard to believe, but our half hour's up. Yes, it is. So when our half hour's up, we start talking about how folks might get those recipes. Mm -hmm. And if someone came to you very nicely and said, Mrs. Farmer, how would I get those recipes? What would you reply? i say timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And then if they went one step further and said, we would really like to talk to you on Facebook, maybe on Monday afternoons, we put on our recipes that we made over the mm -hmm. weekend. We, we know you have a Facebook page, but is, is it hard to get onto it? What would you say? I say hit like. Very simple. Very One simple. step. Yes, very it's simple. It's amazing. Well, I think it's probably time. Looks like the clouds are coming in. Before it rains, we should eat. Yes, we should. So we're going to cut this up and have a feast. And meanwhile, it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mm -hmm.